I am Bill Cortright with Living Right with Bill Cortright. And this is the Stress Mastery Podcast, where we take you from the science to the spirituality of stress mastery. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Stress Mastery Podcast. I am your host, Bill Cortright. This week, our topic is peace. And today's Connection Thursday, I am discussing what is living your truth. So uh, this is kind of a deep episode, and David, the super millennial, is under the weather, so David is not with me today. And so I decided I'll do a, a solo episode. I was hoping to take one of these deeper episodes and, and have fun with David, because I always have fun working on these episodes with David. But this week, since our topic is peace, and peace is the highest state that a human being can be in, that 600 piece, and still have an ego, and um, that, that they can connect to it still with their ego, that 600 piece energy is uh, completeness, and it's connection of head, heart, and hand, and we hit that energy. We move into harmony, and it's an amazing state. That's what's called the flow state that you've heard so much in sports or in writing. We've all experienced that. So and what is it to live your truth? And the question has to begin with, what is truth? Because truth is defined as the body of real things as a fact. If we look at the subject of finding our truth, our spirituality, whatever we want to call it. Is this truth? The question is this, what is the reality? Because if we look at this, Christians have a reality that tells them this is truth. In Judaism, it's a different reality and truth. In Hinduism and Buddhism, there is a yet another reality telling that telling us that's truth. So who's right? And what is the truth? There are many competing ideologies in life, each of them claiming to be spiritual truth or the truth. But let's slow down today. And I ask each of you listening, just open your mind and just pause and let's explore this for a minute. How is it possible that all these differing differing ideologies, all these different stories, how can they all be truth? Now, you may be listening and saying to yourself, they aren't all truth. They're wrong. My beliefs are the right ones. My beliefs are the truth. But how do you know your belief is truth? And the answer is, we, we receive these answers. The answer is because the Bible says so or the Quran says so, or the Torah says so, or your mom and dad said so. See, all these authorities are telling you this is truth. But how do they know that their beliefs are truth? Because their parents, their church, their mosque told them so? And each of us, are passed on these truths and these stories are passed out from one generation to the next. And we're told, this is the truth. But I ask again, is this truth? What does your story tell you? Maybe it tells you that you are the chosen people. Maybe it tells you that you are special and exclusive of God while others may burn in hell. What does your story tell you? What is your truth? Because here it is. Our stories create our reality. And this sets our lens of how we view truth in the world. But again, the question is, is this truth? You're telling me the world is not flat? You're telling me that if I sail off in that direction, I'm not going to fall off the face of the earth? Are you crazy? I can see that the earth is flat. I can see that you're going, if you go that way, it's going to be dangerous and you're going to fall off the face of the earth. That was a truth. That was a truth. So what is truth? What is truth in spirituality? What is truth in our, in our higher selves? What is the truth? Well, 
truth is a fact, correct? That's what they said. Yet a fact cannot be a truth. See, anything that's held in our subjective reality, this is a belief. That is not a truth. It's your belief. You may say it's your truth, but for it to be a truth, for it to be true, it has to be true for everyone, or it's your belief. See, most will agree spirituality is this higher energy, maybe increased frequency. Yet the truth is this. Everything is frequency, including fear and grief. So is spiritual frequency the same energy as fear frequency? If everything is energy, there are only degrees of energy. Then, if that's the truth, there must be a unified field, correct? The unified energy field theory states the strong force, the weak force, the gravitational force, the electromagnetic force are known as fundamental forces. Albert Einstein said, when describing this phenomenon of the quantum entanglement, the linkage of particles in such a way that measurements performed on one particle seem to affect the other, even when separated by great distances. He called this spooky action at a distance, spooky science. You see, that's a truth. The truth is, there is one consciousness of energy, but different degrees. So if there is a unified field, then everything is connected. All then is one energy, which means everything is one consciousness. This is science. Many religions have been preaching this throughout, throughout the centuries, century after century. But science now has proven that this is all one field. And this creates one consciousness. And this one consciousness, as we see it in our reality, when we look out in our world, what do we see in our reality? We see separate beings. We see separate objects. Yet, we know for a fact that this table I'm sitting at right now, this solid table, actually is not solid at all. And that is a truth. It's a fact. And we have to look at it. That is the truth. To my eyes, to my reality, it's solid. But it's not solid when you put a powerful microscope and you could just look through it and you could see the particles all moving that are creating the object. So if we look at this truth, then we have to come to the conclusion we are all connected through this field or this one consciousness. This is actually called a morphogenic genetic field or a quantum zero point field. It's the one united consciousness. So how can we as individuals live our truth in this united field of consciousness? Well, it begins with an understanding of how we see the world. We create our reality, which is our subjective reality, by the way we interpret the world we see. This interpretation is set through the lens of our mind. We interpret behaviors and situations, people and events through this programmed identity we hold in mind. The level of our consciousness in this unified field, this one consciousness, is determined by our interpretation. So if we view and interpret the reality from the valley, our consciousness is set in lower frequency. This is the state of restriction, base energy, fear. That's why when we do the energies, they got frequencies and numbers on them. This identity is held in event, judgment, and reaction. Now, if we view and interpret the reality from the mountain, our consciousness is set in a higher frequency. 
In this state of expansion, base energy courage, this is held in the identity of event awareness response. Yet, what is the truth? If the reality is interpreted from the programmed identity ego, then you are not perceiving truth. You are in your subjective reality. You are not perceiving the truth of objective reality of what is. You are perceiving from your programmed identity, program held in mind, your ego, your beliefs, programs, and experiences. And this acts as a filter. And it, what it does, it blocks the truth of what is. For example, let's do an example for this. Let's say your programmed identity, you went through the stages of development. And you went through the first two stages of development and you moved at age 16 into stage three socialized mind. And you had a programmed identity ego that had was set in low self-worth and low self-esteem. So that means you have entered your life in the third um uh, in the third stage of development with low self-worth and low self-esteem. When you hold this program, you will hold a belief that others will reject you and do not love you. That's the belief that you're going to hold. That's the way you're going to see the world because that's the programmed identity set that's set in the lens of how you interpret the world. So if someone's trying to help you and are trying to help you grow and you will interpret their suggestions, their actions as a form of rejection, because they're telling you to change or they're trying to help you. And you will look at that as rejection. So if someone is trying to help you and they happen to correct you, you'll feel judged and you'll feel a lack of love. And when this happens, you're going to lo lower your frequency and you're going to feel like a victim. You're going to feel apathetic. You're going to feel sad. But the truth, this is not truth. It's not objective reality. The individual is trying to help you. Your rejection is coming from the lens of how you interpret it. And that was set in your programmed identity. Your consciousness is set by what is held in mind. This program identity sets your habitual state. 95% of your behavior comes out of the state from the programs held in mind. So this state not only will color the lens of how you see the world, but it will also project onto others. It'll project onto situations. It'll create motives and dangers that just are not there. You're creating stories in your head. You're creating problems that are not real. So living your truth begins by discovering your true self. So each of us as children go through the stages of development. We can't stop the way this works. But remember what that programmed identity does. That program identity sets your world and your subjective reality. That subjective reality is your behavior, is your habits, it's the way you're going to act. It's the way you're going to live. And that subject of reality, that program identity is held in place through your routine. It sets your routine. Your routine sets your reality. So the subject of reality is your reality. It's not objective reality. See, the stress mastery techniques, methods, and steps are all about a single thing, a single purpose. Truth. It's about truth. It's about moving you out of your subjective reality into the objective reality of what is. Moving you out of judgment, into awareness, out of reaction, red zone, into response of the green zone. You're moving into life and you're dealing with life as it presents. So the human being is hardwired for behavior. This behavior is determined by what is held in mind. And what is held in mind is that programmed identity, and this is held in place through your routine. If you want to change anything in your life, anything, you have 
to change your routine. Because when you change your routine, you change your reality. That's changing your behaviors. That's But here's the thing. To change your routine, which changes your reality, to hold that new reality, you have to change your beliefs. You have to change the programs held in mind. That's why in Stress Mastery, when we are working on it, the first tier of shift coaching is to set a new routine. It's starting to create the shift process. The second tier is to shift your consciousness, your state. How do we do that? By self-authoring the new identity, writing a new script, but also letting go of the old. So if you can understand this, and this is very important, this is an important piece. If you can understand that if you are judging anything in judgment any of any situation, of any person, you are not living your truth. Now, you may not like something, or you might not like what someone is doing, or you might think they should not be doing it, but it doesn't matter what you like. It's still reality of what is. You not liking it, not wanting it, judging it doesn't change what is. All that does is when you fight and judge is lower your frequency, lower your consciousness. This is when you go to the valley. Now, the truth is the energy that flows through us constantly is in the form of vibration. You know this. I'm not making anything up. This is not some new age stuff. If you walk into a room and it's people are negative, you will feel the negative energy. If you walk into a room and people are uplifted, you will feel the uplifted energy. Now, very important with this. The truth, energy flows through us constantly. And people who vibrate at the same frequency vibrate toward each other. In science, this is known as sympathetic vibrations. This in a human being is your habitual state, the programs, the beliefs held in mind. This is what sets your vibration and you will attract from your vibration like people and situations with the same vibration. So very important when you want to change your reality, change your life, you're going to change your routine. Very important. You're also going to change your vibration. And when you change your vibration, it's going to off-put others. Other people are going to try to pull you back into the lower vibration because you're changing. Other people are going to reject you because you're changing. You're changing the vibrational connection with the individual. So when you talk about vibration, all vibration has a cause and effect. Fear energy creates potential. That means whatever you're worried about, you are creating the potential of that coming into your reality. But as fear energy creates potential, so does courage. The courage energy also, when you're working on the mountain and you're working on yourself and you're doing the things that we teach you in stress mastery, you're using visualization, you're using affirmations, you're using a let go technique, you're bringing conflict to resolution, you are also creating potential. That's when new things come into your life. That is the law of attraction, people. So to change your life and to really live your truth, you must discover your truth. Not what you were told your truth was, or not what you were happened to, to be told or program what your truth was, or not tied to what happened to you in the past. No, your truth. What is your truth? So we've been talking about the purposes, right? And the purposes, the reason in, in, in stress mastery shift coaching, the very first session, we do a couple things. One, we find out your habitual state. What is your vibration? 
Where is your energy? Where is your habitual state? Where is it? Low red zone, mid red zone? Is it high red zone, low green zone, mid green zone, high green zone? Where is it? Because that, that changes the way you're going to be coached. Also, very important, we name your ego. Because you need to start to see the voice in your head, the inner critic, the, the stories that are floating on. You can see when you go to judgment, then you can feel it. And then you need to discover your purpose. Each purpose has a higher aim. Each one of the purposes, all 10 archetypes have a higher aim. We've been featuring, this week we featured the, the peace purpose, but we've been featuring each purpose. So if we look at the growth purpose. The aim is to expand the culture. That's its aim. That's its high truth, right? The vitality purpose aim is to expand energy. It's higher truth. The inspire purpose aim is to expand vision. The freedom purpose aim to expand possibilities. The love purpose aim to expand tranquility. Peace purpose aim to expand truth. Connection purpose aim to expand togetherness. Joy purpose aim to expand fulfillment. Integrity purpose aim to expand action. And courage purpose aim to expand strength. Each one of those purposes, each one of them has a truth, your truth, your true self. See, when you open up and you start to reconnect, and I say reconnect because we're all born in the creation mind, the creation mind heart, you start to separate the eyes. The cage mind holds your subconscious and conscious mind. That's where the programmed identity works on it. That's what sets your reality, people. The head sets your reality, the cage mind. Now, the thing is, you didn't set the cage mind. The cage mind was set through the process of the stages of development. When you self-author the cage mind, you change your reality. To do that, though, you got to connect to who you are, your truth. And that's the creation mind. The creation mind is where you discover your purpose. When you discover your purpose and then you discover your true values, that's your connection to truth. That's truth. Why? It's the higher vibration. It's the higher consciousness. Remember, there's one energy, one field, just different degrees. There's a red zone degree, green zone degree, and a purple zone degree. Also, when you open up the creation mind, how do you let go of the past? How do you let go of history? How do you let go of trauma, of failure, of, of pain? You let go through the creation mind. Because when you open up the creation mind, that's where forgiveness happens. You only let go of the past through forgiveness. But also, how do you connect in today's world to the creation mind when everything in reality is telling you that this world is effed up? You connect through the creation mind through gratitude. That's where gratitude is. Gratitude is in the creation mind. It's not in a head. You can't be thankful. The ego's never thankful. Sorry, it's just not. The ego's not thankful. You become thankful because it's your true self. So when you connect to that creation mind, that's when everything starts to change. That's when you can start to change your reality. But remember something, and very important. When you do change your reality, you are changing your frequency. You are connecting to your truth. When you change your vibration, you're going to change everything. You're going to change the things that come into your life, and you're going to change the things that are in your life. You cannot maintain the same routine and change your reality. It's impossible. That routine is set for you to stay in that reality. And if you change it, you're going to change your vibration. If you change your vibration, you're going to change everything that happens in that reality. So you want to start by one, name your ego, two, discover your purpose, three, begin to change your routine. And that's the techniques that we teach in Stress Mastery. And then four, you want to self-author your identity. Remember, to self-author your identity and move in stage four increases your frequency as a habitual state. That means everything you do, Everything you see, everything you experience comes from a higher frequency. To accomplish that, though, 
You have to self-author all five life categories. You can't have your career and money up on that mountain in high frequency and your relationships and health in low frequency. How does that work? Can you see how that energy it would be pulling you up and down all over the place? You can never create harmony. Peace is harmony. It's impossible. And so when you do this, you have to bring in the controls of your life. Five things you can control. Everything else you can't control. Number one is set each day. You got to set your day at higher frequency, higher consciousness. Two, close each day. You must close the day at higher consciousness of frequency. So when you go to bed at night, you can increase your health. You can increase your vibration. Also, you can bring more into your life. That's when the subconscious really goes to work is while you're sleeping. And you control your diet and you control your exercise. You got to understand the essence of being a human. You have the essence of the human is biological, which is the body, social, which is the mind that we're talking about now that sets your frequency and spiritual, your truth, who you really are. And the body supports the mind. So you got to repurpose that diet. You got to repurpose exercise. It's not about the physical people. It's about the totality of being a human. It's about peace and completeness of the human being in connection to who they are in truth. And the last thing that you control is your state. You control your frequency. You control your vibration. You do this by understanding conflict resolution, understanding the function and operation of the human being. And you control that. Nothing outside you can bring your frequency down if you're in awareness. It's impossible. What happens to you cannot affect you unless you go unconscious and drop into lower frequency. It can, yes, you're going to have conflict. You can't stop that. But when you bring conflict to resolution, what do you do to your vibration? You raise it. That's how we grow. We grow by going through our boulders. Patrick talked about it on Ego Maniac Wednesday. That's how we grow. You don't grow through force. You don't grow through fear. You don't grow through lower frequency. And the only way you can grow in higher frequency is you control your state. That's conflict resolution. When the conflict activates, you slow down. You move into awareness. You let go. And you respond, bringing the conflict to resolution. And when you set and close a day, those bookends of the day keep you in higher vibration. So I was hoping to have David with me in this episode because he likes these higher episodes to play with it. But what is living your truth? Living your truth is very simple. Let's answer the question. Living your truth is being in harmony with life. Life is your truth. When you're in harmony of life, you're in the process. That means you have alignment. Your inner world is aligned to what is in the outer world, and you are living life as it presents itself. There you're connected, head, heart, and hand, and in integrity of behavior, you are living your truth. That's it for today's show. Our mission here is to create a shift in the planet. You can join us on this mission by simply like, share, subscribe. The links are right below the show note. Until next time. Well, I guess I should say, as always, until next time, stay inspired.